Hello. Rahul, am I audible? Can you see the chat messages? If you are saying anything, you're not audible. Hello, can we test that? I, uh, yeah, it seems that your audio is not connected. It doesn't show as uh, muted. So let, let's test that. Are you able to read my chat messages, Rahul? Hello. I'm able to see your screen, just uh, that you're not audible. Hey everyone, we're just trying to figure out uh, some technical issues uh, here. Uh, we should be able to start this in a couple minutes.
I Deepesh. Uh, right. Yeah. So I think we can hear you now, uh, Rahul. This is Lalit here. Okay. Hello. Am I audible now? Rahul, am I audible now? Yeah, Tipes, uh, are you able to hear me now? I'm not able to hear anything back from you. Let me know if you are yeah, able to I, hear me. Right, I can hear you. You were, uh, you were audible there for a moment and then your voice was gone. Uh, uh, am I audible now? Hello? I should be. Hello, Rahul. Can you speak up, uh, say something? Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, hello. Hello. I am. Yeah, Raul. We can. Okay, just a moment. Yeah, so Rahul, uh, we'll be starting now. I think uh, it seems that uh, there is some issue with uh, you hearing me. So I'll, I'll type it out. Uh, we'll start now. I'll do quick intro, Maras. Okay, now just a quick check, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, am I audible to everybody? Can you see my screen? Yeah, all right. Okay, sorry for the delay, guys. Uh, there's some issues, I think, uh, at the audio end. Some other, uh, other new thing happens every time. Anyways, so today, Rahul, we have uh, Rahul uh, with us, Rahul Badan, uh, who will be walking us through various machine learning application industry. A uh, couple quick words about who I am and who Rahul is. This is what, uh, in his own words, uh, Rahul is working with uh, Informatica as a data scientist. Uh, Raul started his journey around seven years back, 2015. He's a computer science graduate 
he started uh, working with Infosys and then made a successful transition into data science. He has been there for uh, five plus years now. Uh, about me, I am one of the co-founders uh, of Data Science Vertical at Advancer. Uh, I've been training people in machine learning uh, and consulting with a lot of organizations uh, in data science machine learning, their AI adoption uh, projects uh, for 10 plus years close to now. I started uh, as uh, an engineering graduate and then uh, I did a master's in statistics. So that was the beginning of my journey into uh, data science, uh, which it's been a while. Now, uh, I want to talk about a little bit uh, about what Advancer is and uh, how we have been involved in uh, this AI and ML uh, scaling up uh, seen in uh, industry we uh, are uh, we have been doing this for uh, a while now uh, very recently we became uh, part of global university systems which is a university network uh, spanning across uh, continents uh, we have presence in Canada in India in, in London and Australia across the world and a couple of uh, universities uh, in our network, uh, they focus on various industry domains. Within India, at, as Advancer, uh, we are into data science and AI training providers. Since uh, the beginning of our journey, uh, we have trained more than 10,000 people. The numbers add up uh, every month. And uh, these people come from uh, uh, both uh, in their individual capacity as well as uh, we train corporates uh, as well. Uh, just a moment. Rahul is not able to hear. Okay. Now, uh, sorry about that. I think uh, Rahul's headphone issue uh, might take a while to resolve. But as long as he's able to speak, uh, I think that that'll be good and you can interact with him uh, over chat also. Apart from, so coming back to our uh, introduction about Advancer, apart from uh, 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 training people uh, both in individual capacity as well as uh, training uh, AI and ML teams at organization, on the academic uh, front, we have partnered with uh, uh, IIT Kanpur, uh, UPS, uh, Dehradun, and London School of Business and Finance, Coursera, IBM. These academic uh, collaboration enable us to deliver something which is both uh, mathematically and academically rigorous, as well as uh, industry collaboration enable us that it is relevant. It's not something that we are just teaching for the sake of it because everybody is teaching data science and we shall do it so that's not the thought here okay now uh, before i hand this discussion over to rahul and uh, he can walk you through machine learning applications in industry i want to have a quick uh, five minutes of your time to discuss what all ml and ai courses that we deliver that you can benefit from there are uh, five broader categories of programs that we offer, which are combination of uh, smaller courses that we have. Starting with the advanced certification in AI ML, uh, the certification comes from uh, IIT Kanpur AI and ICT Academy. It is made up of uh, three courses, machine learning in Python, deep learning using TensorFlow and Keras, data analysis in SQL. This is more relevant uh, to people who are coming from engineering background they are uh, familiar with the programming if not uh, doing programming uh, right now uh, they are familiar with programming or the idea of programming doesn't scare them per se data analysis uh, in sql enables you to work with data in general so this particular program focuses on building uh, are enabling you to build uh, AI application, machine learning applications, and uh, assumes that uh, you are coming from a technical background. Now, the other certification in data analytics uh, starts uh, a little bit uh, relatively uh, primitive uh, uh, place where 
the assumption is that you are not coming from technical background and directly starting with machine learning in Python could be a challenging task for you. So in here, the focus is uh, not building on AI applications per se, but giving you skill sets so that you can start your journey in data science. Okay, here we have uh, courses like business analytics and R and data science, data analysis and SQL remains common. And we also have uh, uh, data visualization in Tableau. This enables you to get your foot in the door at, as a beginner in data science industry. Then uh, we have uh, similar programs in collaboration with UPS. Here the certification will come from UPS, not IT Kanpur. This uh, particular program is uh, where we started the basic, but then uh, we move on to machine learning Python and we have domain specialization covered by UPS faculty and we have data analysis in SQL. The fourth combination that we have is a more uh, holistic program, much larger program. It starts with data predictive analytics uh, in R, then uh, we have data science and machine learning in Python. Then we go into learning about deep learning. Along with that, we also have data visualization in Tableau and data analysis in SQL. So this will be much uh, longer, uh, much larger in scope, and uh, we'll start at the very basic and we'll take you to, to uh, the most complex part of your journey that is uh, learning about artificial intelligence, uh, deep learning, intensive learning, and there's tools for that. And uh, you can take this program if you are very clear that, okay, I, am, I want to start from very beginning, uh, but eventually I want to learn uh, whatever there is uh, out there. Couple of questions uh, that uh, I have. Uh, okay, uh, Rahul, I was uh, addressing Rahul Badan, our speaker for today. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Deep. I think uh, now Rahul Badan's uh, audio issues are also resolved in time. Then uh, we have certified data analytics specialist. Uh, this is same as uh, what we have in collaboration with IT Kanpur, uh, the course content, uh, etc. is same, just that certification doesn't come from there. So if uh, many a times certification coming from a very prestigious university enables or opens more doors for you. So, and uh, if you agree with that thought, the certification course provided by ID Kanpur is for you. Otherwise, you can get the same content without uh, uh, that, and you will learn the same thing, just that that badge, that certification wouldn't be there. And you will not have access to classes taken by ID Kanpur faculties also. Now, these all uh, ideas, uh, deep learning uh, with uh, TensorFlow Keras, machine learning with Python, uh, data analytics with R, and different data science courses uh, with different tools are out there you know and uh, next question to answer is what differentiate advancer there are a couple of things uh, that we do differently uh, what you see on slide are just pointers but i would want to say why uh, we personally as co-founders uh, started advancer and what has been the driver so our goal was to provide uh, the education that we can. So we had the background to provide education for AI and ML uh, from the days when probably the term data science uh, wasn't there. Our goal was to provide education which makes people employable from the get-go, which is not academic in nature. In the courses that we developed, they study exactly what they will be doing as part of the job and uh, from our early days we figured out that the driver should be the industry itself right so our origins are training coming from training ai and ml teams in multiple organization so we routinely train uh, with the organizations that you see here and uh, the big fours, ENY, Deloitte, uh, these are our very regular clients. And uh, 
the courses that we deliver to them to their AI and ML team are the same ones that we eventually deliver to our individuals that helps helps us with two things one is that we deliver the content which is industry relevant it needs right now second it is always updated Many a times what happens to a lot of these academically oriented courses that they get stale over time and uh, you see this happening in colleges all the time, isn't it? That uh, uh, five, ten years down the line, the course uh, contains still the same where, whereas the industry has moved on. And that does not happen with our courses because we routinely deliver it to corporates and we are forced to, uh, uh, for the lack of a better word, to update ourselves continuously and when we update us there the courses uh, get updated here also second thing is you cannot make people able to do at the end of your course exactly what they will be doing in industry just by teaching them on whiteboards or making them watch videos the course has to be insanely hands-on and uh, you will see uh, that in our courses the third thing that we realized over time that just teaching people uh, or rather making them learn things doesn't enable them to speak up about it also they need some hard holding so for example you know your subject that doesn't mean you always will be able to answer questions about it especially in a way that an interviewer would want to hear so we know that we can do our best in teaching you but then we also have to work hard on making you prepare for your eventual interviews because all of us in some or the other way want to either start our careers or switch our jobs or uh, go up in the hierarchy within our organizations by making use of these uh, skills that we are learning and we need so we spend good amount of time in preparing people on the same there is a separate team at advancer which helps you prepare your cv it takes a lot of mock interviews we focus on specific areas of interviews be it aptitude or programming or uh, ml and stats and estimation case studies we focus on all these different areas and this is something which comes with any of the courses that you take okay and uh, of course then uh, the routine part which you'll find in other courses also that is you have access lifetime lifetime access so many of the organizations other uh, uh, places that you'll find their six months or one year limitation on the access we don't have that you have 24 7 lifetime access to all the content that will deliver you also have access to updated content so maybe you have taken the course from us and industry keeps on uh, evolving uh, two years down the line things are different you will have access to updated content okay so i think that these are tons of uh, different uh, differentiating uh, factors about advancer which we have developed uh, over the, the years and we're pretty proud of that uh coming to placements uh, these are few brands that you see uh, on my screen which uh, uh, we routinely partner with to supply talent to them and of course the talent pool is the people who join our courses on the number side they're slightly older uh, matrix uh, to each individual as a whole there are tons of opportunities uh, that we have uh, to each individual we send across 12 to 15 uh, opportunities among them we uh, set uh, 200 number of interviews uh, tests per month depending whether it will be an interview or it will be a test is something uh, uh, relates to uh, the organization which is uh, interviewing you so whatever mode of uh, evaluation they prefer and uh, we uh, place uh, 10 to 15 students uh, per month uh, that is coming from uh, uh, different courses and uh, this includes the people who are actually looking for placement help from us uh, there is a good chunk of student uh, which uh, uh, have their own uh, eyes set on a particular opportunity and uh, they just want uh, us to prepare them for the interviews uh, teach them the subject and they take it from there and then there are there is a bunch who want to scale up and move up in the hierarchy in their own organization those numbers are not here we are only including which we as an organization uh, 
enable uh, handhold from uh, beginning to end and then uh, they make uh, way their way through to an organization so this number uh, we could have inflated that but uh, you know we choose uh, not to do so uh, we believe in telling you things as is that was uh, thank you for your time uh, i'm going to hand over to rahul badan and uh, thank you for your time rahul i'm very very happy to have you here and uh, Raul is going to walk us through, uh, talk about his own experiences and in the time, uh, what all machine learning applications industry he has explored or has become aware of. Uh, he would love to share that. Over to you, Raul. Uh, thank you, Lalit. I think uh, I'm audible now. I was able to hear you. I think I fixed the oh, audio problem. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, let me share my screen. <clears throat> so, uh, right, uh, my screen is visible, right? And I'm audible clearly. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, session on machine learning application in industry and uh, uh, you know Lalit has already given introduction so uh, let me just walk you through. Uh, so uh, I have around five plus experience five plus years of experience in uh, you know uh, ML and AI framework and then uh, Mostly, I have worked on the enterprise data, uh, like uh, Informatica is an enterprise uh, you know, software company. We do a lot of product uh, building and uh, customer support. So we are known for our products and customer support. So we, uh, my role is mostly into uh, increasing productivity of the engineer as well as, you know, uh, focusing on the uh, customers, how can we deliver uh, better services for customers? Maybe uh, we want to, uh, you know, use analytics or data science to, you know, in a proactive approach or reactive approach. So also, these are my area. Uh, I have been working on um, the customized information extraction. We call it entity recognition. So we build our own uh, entity recognition models or uh, we have assurance package for the customers. So how can we deliver better services with uh, uh, premium? And uh, uh, we, we, we have the support system going on for customers. So how can we embed uh, you know, intelligence into the system? So these are my working area. I've been working mostly in NLP, predictive uh, modeling, uh, statistical analysis. Uh, so these these are my uh, you know uh, experiences. So uh, today's topic, as you know, uh, we will talk about what are the you know uh, industry uh, industry application of MLAI. We have been talking about MLAI since I mean you know a uh, long time and. We really want to see where exactly it is applicable and how it is applicable, whether it makes an impact or not. I mean, uh, so th th those are the talking points for today's session. So uh, let's look at the trend in AI ML. So just, I mean, before uh, before I uh, I was preparing for uh, this uh, session with you guys, I just wanted to see if uh, how, how has been the trend. I mean. Google is one of the uh, leading, you know, search engine where people. I mean, if I want to search anything, I just go on Google and search. So, how people are searching about AI ML? Uh, what is their, uh, you know, search term? What are the related topics they are looking into? Which is the location where this uh, AI ML is making a buzz? I mean, uh, it's still growing. If you see my uh, my graph uh, to the left. If you see to the, from 2015, uh, uh, from 2015, uh, it was a very nascent stage of AI ML data science. Mind you, I mean, the analytics was there from beginning. Uh, I mean, Dalit would agree with me because he has been there in industry for more than 10 years. So uh, analytics is, is, I mean, long play, uh, but what, what, I mean, what, uh, 
changes came uh, from 2015 to you know till date was the uh, adoption of uh, ai ml data science analytics in the industry or the corporate houses or the companies we want uh, who wants to solve the problems be it uh, traditional companies be it the new age companies uh, so ai ml data science analytics you know visualization these became the forefront of the offerings which you know uh, companies are today dealing with so take for example let's let's take uh, two example like uh, you know let's let's uh, let's say our traditional banking app or say you know uh, sbi for you know for example so earlier uh, we must have been knowing that how tough it was to get a net banking or get a you know uh, get a transaction done but look at the role of analytics in that in the, in the, in, the, in the adoption of the technology or in the adoption of how fast the transactions are happening today i mean you are notified or you are preemptively notified that okay these are your spendings for month you are going to spend this much next month all this kind of a uh, no uh, all this kind of information which is available to us which is not which was, which was not there back uh, 2015 or maybe say seven, uh, 2017 so yeah uh, there is a definite upward graph in terms of uh, uh, you know interest in the ai ml uh, india us uh, south korea canada uh, parts of europe where london these are the budging center actually uh, the graph doesn't talk about china uh, uh, yes uh, because google is banned in china but i would include china as well in that list so these are the five, six uh, countries where uh, AI ML has been, uh, you know, the research, the application, the development uh, is being led uh, by these five or six countries like uh, Singapore, India, the US, Canada, uh, China. And we are in forefront. Uh, this is the first technology where, I mean, India is leading, I mean, in the top five or top, top 10 countries. We used to do the uh, service work. For example, the product is being developed in the US and the service oriented company in India used to you know, service that application. Uh, but in AI ML, uh, we are in the forefront. Uh, you talk any, you, you take any organization, uh, maybe American organization or Indian organization. For example, we have a couple of analytics companies like uh, Fractal, Latent View. These are the new age analytics company. Genfect was there Gen, uh, and is there. Uh, it's mother of all analytics solutions provided by India, Indian company. Uh, but the new age one, the Trigger Analytics, these will lead the uh, AIML, you know, uh, solution, I mean, AIML research development and then, you know, uh, cutting edge technology changes. Now, uh, coming to the related terms and queries. Uh, so one interesting find I was able to see, although uh, the, uh, it is being searched very less, but still, uh, if you see data, uh, you know, uh, data, this this particular, this is being searched. Uh, earlier, there was two cases. There was very scarcity of data. I mean, there was not enough data available. I would make this. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just adjust to this statement. There was no data. There was data, but we didn't know how to persist the data and how to use the data to, you know, uh, come up with a, a knowledgeable framework or use it to our benefit. So data was always there. Yeah, uh, the speed of generation was slow, but of course, I mean, every organization had data. I mean, uh, you go to any organization, ask about like what you were doing 50 years back. They would be able to tell you what they were doing, but they didn't know how to persist it and how to use it. So this is one of the interesting related terms to the ML and AI. So uh, how to persist the data, where to persist the data, how to use the data. These are the three related, uh, you know, uh, topics to the AI and ML framework. Some of the related queries are simpler. I mean, uh, uh, I search for AI ML. 
people search for AI and ML learning because they want to upskill themselves. We can we can inference from there like uh, we are here with uh, advancer because we want to learn AI ML. We want to upskill ourselves and we want to apply those technology. Uh, you know. So these are the trending uh, search in the Google uh, regarding AI ML. Now uh, let's move to the uh, let's move to the second uh, second slide uh, where we are where we are dealing with uh, history of AI. Now uh, it's I mean. Uh, lot of people think or the way it is being portrayed in the you know uh, in the media or in the uh, in the industry that it's it's a very new term or uh, it's a very new thing which has come into the industry and uh, uh, you know made a lot of disruptions uh, are making a lot of noises so these are the misunderstanding uh, we have the first, I mean, uh, statistical approach or any machine learning model, or we can say that statistical methods uh, was developed very late. I mean, very early uh, goes to 1805, the least square or the regression model we are talking about. So it was developed in 1805, I mean, say 1800 or 1810. So think of like, uh, you know, we are in 2000, 2022, okay? So we are into 2022. So how, how much time it has passed, like 200, 300 years, we knew certain things. Uh, the things were there, for example, Bayes theorem. Those are, those are a very important uh, theorem and th those form the basic of uh, data science or AI or ML. And then came the Markov, I mean, let's skip to Markov chain because it's too technical. Then, then in 1943, I mean, uh, 70, 80 years back, we had this neural networks, okay? Uh, say 40 years back, we had uh, RNN backpropagation. Uh, 20, 25 years back, we had uh, this LSTM. Th those are all uh, buzzing now. It is like LSTM, RNN, artificial neural network. These things are buzzing today because uh, now we have the means and resource and the data to uh, you know consume these models or implement this model. We have business use case which will deliver value to us using this model. We have large amount of data. I mean, uh, GBs, TBs. We have. I mean, daily we are generating data into GBs and TBs. Uh, can you just think like? Uh, uh, Per day, we are consuming one and a, one and a half GB of data. Like uh, uh, I'm just assuming that uh, we do refill our mobile with every day. Like we we subscribe to some uh, tele uh, telecommunication company, and then we have uh, one GB or 1.5 GB, you know, uh, data with us every day. So we are consuming that data. That means we are once I consume the data, means I'm generating for someone else. So say I'm browsing YouTube, I'm uh, I'm I'm replying to your mail, I'm you know uh, uh, browsing some uh, website. So I'm creating data. So think of that and see how much data we are creating every day. So two things: business is there, data is there. Now most important part we have the hardware support. If I go back to 1805, maybe computer was not there. Uh, it came relatively uh, recently, maybe hundred years. Uh, I was not having that kind of uh, infrastructure. Uh, for example, I was not having RAM. I was not having processing powers to implement this technology. So the concept existed, but the, the means of implementing that concept was not there. So that's the difference. That, that's the difference between you know 20, 25 years back and now. Uh, if you, if you, I mean, if, if you just uh, search around what uh, Intel or NVIDIA is doing, you will get an idea that uh, most of them are working to develop processor which are uh, very much friendly to AI and ML technologies. So uh, uh, earlier it was not the case. Like they used to build the processor for say enterprise consumption or say domestic consumption or the uh, personal con consumption. Like we have our laptops and something, something like that. But now they are focusing more of their time into developing something 
something related to AI and ML. Uh, Intel has already done it, NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA is uh, working on it, and I think they also have a good uh, good amount of success in that. So this is the uh, history of uh, AI. Uh, but if you talk about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, these are very confusing terms. Okay, I mean, uh, we try to mix all of three into one bucket, but ideally those are not. Actually, artificial intelligence and uh, encapsulate machine learning, deep learning, statistical analysis, data. So everything comes into artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is the superset, and then the machine learning and the deep learning are its specialization or subsets. So uh, I mean, how, I mean, uh, can you remember how? I mean, uh, have you asked any way to any particular restaurants or any particular location? Uh, to any person or say any physical maps have you used? At least I don't remember in last uh, five to seven years, I have asked someone to point out me whether, uh, where is that restaurant or where is that location? What we do simply is we open our Google Maps and then search that particular location, start from our end and then we reach that location. So artificial, I mean, uh, I'm just trying to show you how the analytics and then it, it it evolved. I mean, earlier uh, uh, we used to uh, just go and search, but now you have the which way you should take. I mean, how how that was. I mean, how the traffic uh, signals were uh, detected. Like, if you take this way, then you would be reaching uh, early. If you take that way, then you you would be having traffic signals. Once you go and travel, a lot of people travels in that location and they search uh, the the way or the uh, road. Google uses its analytics power to tell you that, okay, uh, there is a traffic jam in that area. And then you use that uh, knowledge to not go through that area and go back, uh, go through another area. So uh, this is how the uh, industry has evolved. And uh, what exactly artificial intelligence means is like, uh, whatever you used to do, could be, you know, uh, could be rep replicable by some program. But what machine learning does is put some intelligence to it. For example, say, uh, you know, uh, you are traveling to, say, Europe or, say, US. You have a credit card. So I can write two types of uh, program. One, uh, you are not. I mean, uh, I know as a bank, I know that uh, you don't go to US often. So any kind of transaction you do in US, I just block your card saying that, okay, boss, this is this is something weird and you don't usually go uh, to US and do transaction. So I'm blocking your card. This is one scenario. Let's talk about the second scenario. Before blocking your card, what I do, I just analyze your IP address from where you did your transaction, which area are you operating, which website you visited, what time you visited, what is the exact uh, website name, what is its domain name, so .com for US, maybe .in for India. If I analyze those features and try to say you that, okay, uh, you went to US, that's fine, I know. Uh, and these are based on these features. I'll try to decide whether I will block you or not. Okay. So uh, see the difference. Earlier it was like direct. Uh, someone manually would do it. So we improved from there to do it uh, automatically. Like uh, we disable the card automatically. And from there we improved to a situation where uh, we and before taking any decision, we analyze the context on which this information is coming to me. So. The first one is artificial intelligence, where any techniques that enables machines to mimic the behavior, that is one. Then you have a very specialized field where you try to uh, you know, learn few features and from there you uh, generate your program and that those programs are helpful. And then you have specialized field where it's called deep learning. So uh, even the features, I told you like that the IP and then the location, though, though I don't need that also. I need just the data and then I'll figure it out myself whether uh, what, what was the pattern and and how can we use that pattern to our benefit. So these are three uh, 
layer you can call it one is like the ai ml and then deep learning now let's move to the gist of our presentation today so how things are moving in the industry uh, how those are impacting really uh, we know what is ml ai the data science a lot of people are talking about it uh, anywhere you go you want to learn ml ai you want to learn analytics but how exactly it is you know uh, affecting or uh, improving from the baseline or 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 how it was yesterday and how it is today yesterday in the sense how before analytics how after analytics what did you achieve whether it it, it was helpful or it was not so we have three case study with me uh, one is of spencer uh, other is of uh, ikea and the third is of uh, vodafone so uh, i I've, I've taken this content from various uh, sources uh, if you want i can share the sources with you uh, and then uh, you can you can explore more on it you can read about it so one uh, the first case study is of retail industry uh spencer is one of the uh, leading retail company in india uh, just like uh, geo mart uh, uh, and then you had big bazaar and then now amazon and then a flipkart so spencer uh, uh, is a kolkata based company uh, i think uh, uh, goinka group i think uh, it's a goinka group from kolkata and uh, recently it acquired nature's basket as well uh, i think uh, uh, you would have seen nature baskets it, it was with godrej and then they were acquired nature basket it deals with the organic uh, stuff like uh, you will get uh, a more premium item uh, for you and then um, it has a very good presence in the market like uh, they are they are present across 35 cities in the in the india and they are located mostly in um, in the south and the you know uh, in the in the in the in the west it, it, it is located in the uh, maharashtra and the focus is on the maharashtra so uh, before i mean i mean i mean uh, there is a concept now before pandemic and after pandemic a lot of things have changed the behavior of the customer has changed completely earlier we used to uh, venture out and uh, you know touch and feel the matter and then purchase it that instinct was there still the instinct was there but now after pandemic we don't want to venture out at least for buying stuff any stuff you say it until unless it is very costly or you have to see that stuff then only you buy maybe gold but then again uh, the industry is changing the gold itself uh, so at, at least the essential items you don't want to see you know the brands and you want to buy it directly from there no need to venture out for that even the vegetables you don't want to go outside and get it uh, source it uh, for your need so uh, spencer was doing well uh, in the brick mortar uh, you know uh, brick mortar way they were not having a uh, high digital presence before pandemic so uh, they were relying on customers to customers footfall in their brick mortar and then they were servicing the customer that way now comes the pandemic everybody is closed i mean everything is closed everybody is behind the doors nobody is willing to come out of that store and um, you have to survive that uh, survive that uh, time because as a business i mean you are i mean there will be no footfall in your uh, store physical store uh, there were some restrictions but i hope uh, uh, not i mean nobody was going to the physical store to buy stuff everybody wanted their uh, you know items delivered on the door okay so spencer spent uh, five day uh, spencer spent, uh, spent only five days to uh, develop the conversational ai, AI conversational uh, solution or said becoming digital company from brick and mortar to digital company in five days they were able to figure out something that we will see in the next slides and then they were able to survive that that area and they uh, thrived in that area not only survived thrived in that area if you see this uh, economics times report uh, sanjeev goenka is i think uh, chairman of uh, spencer and uh, he told 
they growed i think uh, they grown up to 6 to 7% uh, 6 to 7 times in their uh, you know in that period i mean uh, in in 2018 19 they used to grow 4 and 1/2 uh, x but they they have grown to 6 and 6 and 1/2 uh x in the in i mean after the adoption of uh, you know technology so that kind of impact uh analytics and ai or data science is creating the company was again a legacy company it, it was founded in 1990 so they were able to they were not that adaptive to the technology as of now say so 20 years i mean 20 years into their uh, you know operation they were not using analytics but come the requirement uh, the moment and they adapted the technology and they were able to grow like in a massive scale so as i was discussing with you the challenge was to service the customer and survive that uh, uh, survive that period because it was too tough to have re- to be in the retail industry everything was closed now the solution part so before i uh, i talk about the solution let's 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 see a small video let me know if you are able to see my screen and uh, i'll i'll play this up for you so uh so I, i i i hope you get the idea that uh, what they were doing i mean they they created a, a chatbot that was embedded into whatsapp and then you are able to order your essential needs directly from whatsapp you don't even need to install any app or browse any particular website to you know uh, order your essentials so this was the transformation so the created it they created the spencer grocery assistant uh, integrated that with the whatsapp and they were able to reach out to the uh, reach out to the customer directly so uh, there was a option to reach out using say zomato or swiggy but they were able to reach out directly to the customer uh, themselves so that is that i mean earlier they used to get connected using footfall but now they are connected to whatsapp like imagine the uh, amount of amount of data it created amount of value it created and then it stayed with them permanently your digital footprint stays with the company permanently they will not uh, you know waste it i mean footfall anyway you might come and then go you have the uh, mobile number and all but once you are into the whatsapp uh, or messaging system uh, you can promote your brand easily you can forecast your i mean you can broadcast your uh, uh, you know discounts or any offerings your new offerings you have directly to the customer and then uh, the whatsapp business account uh, it was not that pan- i mean it was not that popular pre pandemic a lot of people were not using whatsapp business account for doing uh, business or you know they were 
using their own personal account for them. But two things happened. One, the adoption of uh, uh, digital payment and then the uh, digital way of communication both got a wide adoption at least in india i would say uh, and then uh, companies who used these two methods uh, to sustain and service their customer are doing very well today uh, you can take any case uh, and you must have been uh, you 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 had you may be having your own experiences like how you dealt in the pandemic with uh, uh, you know sourcing essential items and all now what was the impact uh, on terms of number because uh, in ai ml we try to do a lot of stuff we try to implement a lot of stuff some are very fancy some are very useful ultimately what delivers value to your organization will matter i mean um, we can do fancy stuff and you know be happy about it but uh, we can ask ourselves whether that delivered a very uh, you know impact on your problem or not i mean i can deliver a newspaper using drone but is it solving any problem i mean was there any problem delivering newspaper by someone else that you tried delivering using drone so uh, that questions keep on coming up when you explain a solution to the uh, management so when we quantify it or say in terms of number then it is very easy for you know business uh, leaders to understand that okay, okay this will deliver this kind of impact so on the number basis uh, it was only 5 days which took spencer uh, in collaboration with yellow.ai let me take the vendor name yellow uh, yellow.ai work with uh, spencers to you know yellow.ai is a uh, chatbot specialized uh, organization so they work with uh, spencer and in 5 days they were able to uh, getting live uh, for uh, spencer you know, essential item delivery um, they had uh, uh, you know in a second they were uh, able to uh communicate uh, concurrently uh, 1100 uh, you know concurrent uh, communications were happening and they had 4.5 million consumer messages sent imagine the kind of data it generated i mean 4.5 million rows of data you have or you know uh, events you have or messages you have so that was the impact on uh, spencer digital transformation Uh, in terms of revenue or uh, you know business terms of profitability and all we already knew that the chairman has already uh, mentioned in the newspaper that okay they were able to achieve high growth that comes with high uh, high profit and you know high operation margins and all so i'm not venturing into that but in terms of uh, operation or uh, impact these are the numbers now let's move to the ikea uh we are very familiar with ikea and we love the products so uh again um uh, they are a retail company um they are very big they have uh, very big warehouses i think they opened uh, one store in bangalore that that's a very big one they had opened it in hyderabad and i still remember the queues went up up to i think uh, one kilometer and then i mean for days you will struggle to get to ikea and that that whole area was like uh, crowded the day ikea opened it's a swedish company uh, if you don't know uh, swedish furniture company so any essential item related to your home furnishing from kitchen to bedroom to living room you can get it in ikea um but they are again i mean they were uh, mostly focused on the brick and mortar they were not uh, into digital space that way and uh, they wanted to um, after pandemic they wanted to bring in their digital strategy to uh, a shape and they wanted to you know uh, use this digital transformations to offer customers better now uh, we will discuss here i mean uh, two three points like uh, again what was the challenge um they collaborated with google cloud so we will talk about it and then uh, what are the decision making criteria they used for uh, improving their digital offering and then finally what was the impact on their uh, revenue or brand or you know customer offering so the challenge was 
they have a million product i mean more than a million product in their offering i mean uh, if you have seen the ikea website i mean you will get confused what to buy and what to not because for i mean if you want to buy a office chair you will have thousands of office chairs with you and then uh, uh, few customizations few premium products few cheap products uh, few very essential products so uh, they have million millions of product catalog now the challenge was uh, in the website when you search something say table uh, office table and chairs ikea wanted there should not be any discrepancies between what you search what they show and what the product description is so there are three things one what customer is searching what we are showing and what description we are providing so it is it is i mean uh, uh, it is not very easy to maintain the product description because they also source it from outside i mean they do not uh, uh, manufacture themselves they source it from outside so uh, the product description has to match the product and then subsequently it should uh, it should uh, it should it, it should be shown when the customer searches okay so this is this was one challenge the second challenge was although they wanted to improve their digital uh, digital offering they were not having a concrete uh, concrete uh, uh, concrete framework to establish whether this is working or this is not working suppose i want to uh, come up with a zoom product zooming feature right so whether that product zooming feature was working right for the customer or it was not working that's called a uh, ab testing a by b testing we call it in the industry so uh, they wanted to uh, test out more and uh, they wanted a good framework where they can experiment uh, uh, in a rapid rapid way and bring in the you know digital uh, bring in the features which would be impactful for the customer be it in app or be it in uh, website the third thing was you are such a big company you 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 always try to generalize but that's not the idea i mean we are moving towards the customization i mean i don't want to see what product amazon sells or ikea sell uh, i want it to be customized for my uh, for me when i go to the website uh, i'm ready to share some information with website but it should be customized i should not be uh, blown away or swamped by the irrelevant information i should be shown very relevant information so this this three challenges they had uh, when they started with uh, their in, uh, when when they started their framework in uh, improving the recommendation engine so uh, they collaborated with google cloud and google cloud has all the ai and ml capabilities so uh, they uh, in journey with them uh, they bought the product google cloud as well as the google cloud engine uh, and you you could find the uh, you could find the uh, information in their uh, google cloud uh, you know uh, google cloud website also like uh, they are talking about this uh, use case and how it impacted you can see the videos on uh, videos of the uh, ikea product manager on the youtube as well uh, now ikea was doing around 5 uh, to 7 experiments per week so imagine the number of customers they have imagine the number of product they have and imagine the number of uh, uh, you know data points they would they would work on to uh, personalize the recommendations okay so they were doing 5 7 experiments per week and uh, this is one way like you can do rapid experiment but after you do the experiment how do you decide which experiment did best to me and what delivered result to me i mean uh, experimentation is fine but on what criteria are you judging those experiments what are the uh, matrices based on which you will decide okay this experiment has failed and this has passed i am going to take this experiment to next uh, uh to the next step and i want to implement that for my customer so uh, they had uh, two or three uh, combination model combination one is like uh, 
they were trying to recommend directly once you go to their website they, they are trying to recommend for you uh, the second combination was frequently brought together i mean for example uh, someone is buying your office table that means he might need a office chair or he might need an office lamp or he might need a uh, some decorative you know uh, maybe grass or flowers or anything or frame uh, other thing uh, the, the last thing was others you may like i mean for example uh, if a lot of people are buying that you might also buy that stuff so three or four model approach they were having i mean uh, just to deviate a bit from the topic recommendation engine came into force when amazon came into the picture or netflix came into the picture netflix for original uh, netflix uh, started a competition in 2006 to uh, create a recommendation engine okay and that recommendation engine will uh, help the uh, help the customer to browse better so suppose i like action movies so i would be shown uh, better action movies for watching okay so there the recommendation engine came and then walmart and amazon really picked it from there and they started leveraging recommendation engine for upselling we, we call it in up, uh, we call it upselling in uh, uh, in the industry where you want to upsell one product when you are buying another product so uh, so ikea came late to the party but yeah it arrived very beautifully so uh, these are the use cases they had for recommendation now the parameters based on which they wanted to judge was conversion rate how many products are getting added to the cart and what is the average order value these three things they wanted to monitor uh, based on these three things uh, they went on to uh, you know uh, decide which experiment would fail and which experiment would give them a better result now coming to the business impact so um, from the baseline they improved 400 percent when they started uh, showing relevant uh, recommendation to the customers i mean earlier say they used to show say 10 relevant uh, recommendation now it moved to 400 percent so that means it moved to uh, 40 recommendations they were able to show it properly the click rate click rate in the sense uh, generally when you go to a website how many clicks you make for the final destination for example i'm trying to buy a office table how many clicks i'm making okay the more clicks i make uh, the better it is for the uh, uh, for the company for example if i make uh, more clicks then means i'm browsing more products and definitely i'll buy one or uh, I like the products and I may, uh, you know, the leads are generated, I might buy in future. So click rate through, I mean, click uh, through rate. The, this, this term is used for uh, uh, monitoring the marketing analytics. It is very much one of the forefront metrics uh, used in the marketing analytics where uh, if you are marketed something, then uh, whether you are clicking or not, if you are clicking, how is the click rate? And the last thing is they were able to um, they were able to achieve two percent increase in their order value so that is i mean that is great i mean uh, ikea is not that cheap so when you are able to increase your uh, order value or say sales sales figure by two percent it's a great result so uh, ikea was able to uh, you know uh, fully exploit the digital changes it made uh, in terms of uh, recommendation engine and it's purely ai and ml play uh, so i think i hope uh, this this all this all motivates you to get into this industry and you know do something uh, or, or be part of this industry and you know deliver these kind of solutions the last and the third one is vodafone now uh, if you are a icsi customer let's let's park the vodafone a bit uh, if you are an icsa customer earlier uh, i'm talking about my personal experience earlier we used to have a traditional ivr where we were clicking one for english and then going for account problem and then going for say credit card block or then pin generation and then finally talking to the you know agent 
but now when you call customer care for icsa i don't know about other company icsa i have the uh, first hand experience so they will ask you uh, simple thing their uh, their automatic voice will uh, voice assistant will ask you simple thing what problem are you facing sir you say okay i have a credit card uh, pin problem i want to block it they will go and directly block it there is no uh, there is no uh, going through the options menus and then uh, disconnecting uh, there is no such things so the idea itself has improved that means he understood so what happened in the background when i say my credit card uh, i want to block my credit card uh, i lost my credit card so they understood that okay the credit card uh, belongs to us has been lost and the customer is trying to block it so this is a simple explanation from the from my uh, inference now i can say it in different way uh, i'm not able to find my credit card and would you be able to block it i can i can i can say in a very verbose statement as well but the system will understand that yes credit card block is what required and the customer is looking for credit card blockage that's the important thing so that is how the vodafone came into picture and they also wanted to uh, do something about their uh, uh, customer experience or uh, supporting customers who are calling the vodafone so the main challenge was uh, from uh, you know uh, needle to sword i mean uh, from big problem to from very small uh, frequent problems to very large and complex issues everybody was calling the vodafone customer care so customer uh, vodafone is a legacy company and it's a big company so it's, it it thought why not uh, find a way which will uh, deflect those calls uh, and better you know better serve the customer so this was the challenge and they wanted to uh, implement ai ml and find out what the solution is now here the vendor is accenture uh, accenture uh, help vodafone to transform their uh, customer journey so there are two um, uh, two approach they took one was reactive approach and other was proactive approach the vodafone wanted uh, it should not be always reactive i mean if i know the problem beforehand should i be able to communicate uh, uh, communicate with the customer better it uh, in a proactive manner and the reactive was like when when i call the customer care they would try to help me proactive is something like they would you know just uh, inform me that okay boss you are going to have problem or this is this is the offering you have or this is the bill you would be getting something like that so let's take two example of it okay so let's let's take a uh, uh, two two example of it one suppose uh, uh, my my you know my uh, my, uh, my internet is not working or i am not able to call anybody or my sim card has lost okay so i call the customer care okay and based on my problem they will be able to tell me at which channel i should communicate my problem earlier it was only call if you if you relate to yourself also like you, you'd be calling to airtel or uh, say uh, any telecommunication company you are using maybe jio so you would call them and uh, tell them your problem but what about say for example my sim card has lost i want to uh, you know get a new sim card so i called them and then uh, it was part of very frequently asked questions like the uh, frequent problem uh, a customer faces so uh, the my case is deflected to a chatbot okay or say a, a web chat okay so uh, what company actually saves in here is two things one it was it was better able to serve you uh, using a better 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 channel where uh, you know uh, your queries will solve in a very uh, in a very short time the second thing from the uh, from the company perspective this the first one from the customer perspective the second one from company perspective they were able to relieve few of their agents by not talking to you they were able to relieve few of the agents that means they were able to guide them to a more or better complex problems i mean uh, the the agent or the 
uh, customer care agent would be able to focus on more uh, important problem than this one or some more complex problem important is not a good word but the complex problem these are all faq problems okay based on this the deflection will be decided either you, your 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 case would be handled in voice in chatbot in app online or which uh, or web chat okay so there was a deflection in the channel now comes the proactive campaign okay suppose i am holidaying in say us i have not activated my uh, say uh, i have i forgot to activate my uh, ist calling or say or by any means i spend i mean my bill was about to come more okay so uh, what vodafone does it mines the information so for example a lot of people are uh, querying a uh, lot of people are talking to agents and you know vodafone customer care out of those issues it tries to find out what are the relevant topics for example high you know high high billing while traveling abroad uh, connectivity issue or say i'm changing the uh, so 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 for example i am i am traveling to uh, say a location where uh, the networks are not that are not reachable uh, very easily so what vodafone will do it will drop you a message or a call uh, where it would explain that okay you might have a inflated bill because you you are traveling to us better be be prepared or say uh, uh, you are you are traveling to a location where the network net connectivity is slow so better uh, be prepared so these are the uh, proactive text messages okay so uh, actually companies saved on this kind of a approach i mean uh, people will not come to your uh, customer care asking that how my bills got inflated how i am not able to call anybody because you know i mean uh, Uh, the tele telecommunication company has already informed you that so would be the situation so this two uh, proactive and reactive uh, idr was is being used by vodafone to deflect their uh, cases now uh, the impact how much the impact how much impact it created on the vodafone so as of now the number says uh 15% uh, case deflection was available like 15% like out of 100 15 cases were resolved without talking to the customer agent uh, customer agent was not needed for uh, addressing those problems so it's a huge saving for them i mean they need to they don't need to employ that much uh, customer agent plus they don't have to create that kind of infrastructure plus they will be able to serve you in a very delicate and quick way so these are the impact now in terms of uh, uh, usage of the digital channel or the adoption of the other means of addressing your problem was 26 for the up from up to 26% like earlier it was say uh, 100 and now it became 126 like 100 people were using uh one in a hundred people were using the digital channel now 26 people out of 100 are using digital channel number of reduction i mean uh, because the deflection was 15% so uh, the company says uh, 1.5 million number of calls inbound calls were getting uh, got reduced that's a huge amount okay so these are couple of uh, you know business use case or how ai and ml has impacted those businesses um uh, using ai and ml now one personal uh, one personal uh, experience because i am working in the uh, improving the customer experience myself so our focus is also uh, on these lines i mean uh, how can we reduce the load on engineers how can we serve the customer better how can we deflect those support queries then and there itself uh, one way to uh, you know uh, help them is like for example suppose uh, some so, some customer comes up with some issues in our enterprise product now uh, we have lot vast knowledge uh, based articles available with us how can i share uh, knowledge based article then and there to the customer so that he might not waste his time in creating case and then an engineer is assigned and then he will talk to that customer he will try to fix it will take some time right 
but if i am able to share a relevant knowledge base article to him then the case will not be created engineer's time is saved customer time is saved and we are happy about it right uh, the experience improved uh, from here so that's the um, kind of impact we are also working on now um, let's move to you know what exactly is machine learning like we have seen the impact we have seen the uh, we have seen how it uh, you know uh, how it is impacting industry uh, the brief overview the history but what exactly is the machine learning so uh, i have highlighted a couple of keywords in machine learning that is very large data set patterns processing data and experience receiving explicit programming instruction okay and then adapt to the response of new data and experiences these are exactly the keywords which you are looking at when you talk about machine learning okay machine learning is possible when you have large amount of data sets you try to detect patterns and learn from those patterns process the data and mine it and learn from those you know uh, uh those those pattern by not programming explicitly for example you will not write some program to understand the data the program is such that you will understand or the program will make use of it automatically okay and then use those uh once you build the uh, build the program or the model or the system it will try to learn by himself uh like humans like for example uh, if you are teaching a kid uh, that okay it's a dog it's a cat uh, it's a tree then he might encounter she might encounter a small tree a big tree uh, a grass uh, a banyan tree uh, uh, you know any kind of tree okay so once you teach them to identify tree or a dog they will be able to uh, identify a uh, dog tree sometimes they will try to i mean sometimes they will make a error but then once you provide a feedback they would be able to learn from it for example the tree will look greener okay uh, the dog will have two ears uh, long tail four legs so uh, by understanding those behavior or the patterns uh, system will learn it by himself the, this is exactly what machine learning ai or you know deep learning does so there are three types of uh, learning happens in machine learning one is descriptive one is predictive and one is prescriptive so descriptive is some event has happened and then you are trying to analyze those event so that is data analytics i mean uh, earlier the i mean the way industry survived the analytics industry uh, used to work is uh, some event was happening in the in the, in, in in the organization and they used to read those uh, happenings in the events and they were analyzing those data and they are providing some feedback to the business users or the relevant uh, people but now the predictive part so predictive will anticipate what will happen i have the information what has happened and use those informations to predict what might happen so this is more useful i mean if i have uh, i i know that okay this might happen then i would be more prepared uh, to uh, you know uh, to use that information or uh, to my to, to my best of knowledge i mean i'll try to use that the third is prescriptive prescriptive is what you can do i mean uh, what will happen is one thing now what you can do to you know use it or uh, you know uh, to use it to achieve your goals i mean suppose i i have a goal to reduce my expenditure by 10% okay i am say let's say, let's say i'm spending a lot okay uh, we all do so how can i mean i used to like worry that okay i've spent a lot i've spent on this and that item now i'll get a uh, let's say i have a solution which will tell me okay boss diwali is coming uh, you might uh, you might spend more uh, dasera diwali is coming now what about my system tells me that okay boss diwali is coming you would be spending much what about big billion day i mean 
will you be able to purchase few items in big billion day to save more so this is the pipeline and this is the uh, this is the three branch of uh, ml or ai we see today so uh, again those uh, in technical terms uh, we are dealing mostly with supervised and unsupervised learning uh, we have another re reinforcement learning but those are into academics and uh, we have barely started uh, you know using that a lot of organizations are doing it but mostly we are using supervised and unsupervised the big corporations are like uh, google or amazon or microsoft they are trying their hands at reinforcement learning but at general level we use supervised and unsupervised uh, machine learning now what is supervised machine learning so uh, you have the inputs and then you have the outputs okay and based on that uh, input and output uh, relation you whenever a new item will be there suppose um, i know it's a dog or it's a cat or it's a tree what object i have if i know beforehand i'll try to study those objects i'll try to figure out what are the features available for identifying those objects and whenever a new objects arrives in front of me i'll try to uh, use that knowledge which i have studied in form of uh, patterns features and then apply and see uh, what that particular object is so what it is uh, learn the relationships of given input to the output i mean say if i say uh, there is a object it has four legs two ears two eyes one tail and it has a small height and its color is white okay so that that would be labeled as dog okay uh, similarly uh, uh, i would have another feature called uh, called uh, the color is green it has many it has a very high height okay it's a very high height and then i'll try to identify as tree so i know uh, the input and then the relationship between input and output when to use it whenever i have the input and output both with me for example i know what's the output and i i know what's the input then only i will be using supervised approach so in more technical terms it's called tagged data or labeled data okay uh, uh, if i have the labeled data with me the data is there and then it's labeled whether it's uh, it's a dog or it's a cat if it is labeled then i'm i'm good with using supervised machine learning okay and then how it works already i explained you uh, you have the label data you try to uh, train your models using those label data and once the training is complete uh, whenever a new data will come your model will be able to predict the outcome with a given uh, you know given given uh, given accuracy okay it might be high it might be low okay now uh, what are the algorithms okay uh, everybody wants to get into the programming space and all so linear regression logistic regression decision tree uh, name bias svm random forest okay um, simple neural networks uh, adaptive boosting these are couple of uh, terrifying names i mean yeah it's not easy uh, but definitely uh, these are the algorithms which you can use in supervised machine learning now what are the uh, what are the business use cases uh, you might have come across or you know uh, you can try to relate to it one was like the simplest one is like uh, classifying whether uh, email is a spam or it is important uh, detecting fraud activity in your credit card okay so let me tell you the industry related to it the i mean credit card fraud detection will move into bfsi or the banking and financial services classifier of spam filters and all is a general category but we can move it to the marketing uh, analytics or uh, marketing domain where you are trying to uh, see if it's a spam or it's a important mail you can um, uh, you know uh, you can predict the client churn again client churn in the sense uh, suppose there are thousands of customers with you you are a telecommunication company or a banking company it is applicable across the industry everywhere you have the loyal customers and 
some customers would be coming in and coming out of your organization. So uh, based on your services. So predicting the client chain, I mean, client chain in the sense, uh, what is the probability that this customer is going to leave you? Uh, why it is important? Because you will have a loss of revenue if the uh, client sleeps you or he doesn't use your services. So you would be interested in knowing who, is, who might leave us and then you might take some proactive steps in uh, you know, retaining that uh, client, okay? Um, suppose, I mean, uh, in the healthcare also, you have a lot of uh, applications. Suppose uh, you want to determine that when my ICU bed will be empty. I mean, a lot of Apollo is doing a lot of uh, use case on this. So what this means is, what this pain is, uh, suppose you have a 100 bed ICU facility available with Apollo. And then you don't want the, the patient to linger on the ICUs because ICUs are costly as well as the, as soon as it gets back, someone else would get treated and they would benefit out of it. Uh, so you save cost for the customer and then you also save I mean, time for you. I mean, you can enroll or you can uh, treat another customer or patient, okay? So uh, these are a couple of uh, industry use cases um, you have in picture and they are, I think, uh, analytics is very much into uh, those domain and you have a lot of uh, applications using supervised learning. Uh, now coming to the unsupervised machine learning. So unsupervised machine learning deals with unlabeled data. So you don't have any label associated with it, okay? Uh, nobody has labeled anything. You you have to explore yourself. I mean, uh, uh, the input has to be explored and then uh, output is determined. Uh, I mean, the cat or the dog type of label will not be, or zero or one label is not associated with any of the data set, okay? Then when to use it? So suppose um, I'm analyzing the organization, say Walmart, okay? Now, uh, somebody has asked me to see what kind of customers we are dealing with, okay? I don't know, there is no such labels. Uh, I would have only the customer data, okay? So say I have the features, but not a particular label. So I would have a different kind of uh, customers like high spending, low spending, okay? Um, say customer who are actively using Walmart, uh, Walmart app or website to order. Some are passive user. Some are using when you have only offers. They are not very loyal. Wherever the offers are applicable, they will buy it from there. So these are the uh, understanding after I analyze the data and give it to the business users to consume. There is, I mean, in the databases or in the in the in, in the in the in the uh, data storage. There is nowhere written that, okay, this customer is low spending or high spending. It is after the analysis, I know that, okay, these are few customers which are low spending or high spending. So it's called customer segmentation and, and the supervised, uh, unsupervised machine learning is very much applicable in the customer segmentation. Uh, so uh, few of the algorithm which uh, we use in unsupervised machine learning is K-means clustering. Uh, recommendation system, uh, hierarchical clustering, uh, and then auto encoder is there, but uh, it's too technical. Mostly we use uh, clustering methods, K means hierarchical, uh, this type of clustering algorithms, we use it. Uh, as in when you start with your sessions, you will be able to you know, better understand what are these techniques. Now, what are some of the business use cases? One, I already explained. The second was recommending movie like uh, how, what is your taste and based on that taste, you will be uh, recommended movie. Uh, there is another use case called topic modeling. Uh, topic modeling in the sense, so say if I give you thousand uh, rows of uh, news article and then I want to segregate them into say sports news, business news, uh, say technical news, technology related news, say political news, so how can you segregate that? So these are a couple of uh, use cases you have. Uh, and then you have 
another another good uh, good good use case is uh, fake reviews okay uh, one way of identifying that is like uh, you can label it it's a fake or it's a original review the other is you while you mine the data you try to understand that okay uh, is there something is there any 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 way or any pattern to write a fake review good or bad both i mean uh, i'm talking about uh, good reviews you have someone to write fake reviews about your website and get it popular or you can write some fake news uh, fake fake reviews and downgrade uh, the website rating uh, so yeah uh, you can you can you can try finding out uh, that as well uh, these are a couple of use cases in our unsupervised uh, machine learning now moving to the career choices you have in the data science uh, now with the start of i mean i mean when this trend started and you know uh, so uh, even the industry was not knowing what would be the uh, roles uh, what would be the designations uh, what should be the salary structures nobody was knowing actually uh, and the industry is still evolving i mean uh, they are trying to find out uh, what would be the you know uh, relevant uh, career choices people might have in in, in analytics industry like earlier it was all analyst i mean uh, senior analyst or business analyst or uh, say data analyst this kind of uh, designations and job roles were there but now it has changed i mean uh, you will have different kind of people uh, one would be data scientist one would be data analyst what would be data engineer someone would be bi uh, developer uh, someone will be system engineer but doing analytics work uh, someone will be principal uh, data scientist so these uh, these are few designation and career choices you have but if you uh, try understanding what are the uh, actual career choices you have then you have to follow how the industry works okay so let me review how i mean just let me let, let us let us imagine how it works okay so you have the data generation and then the data is being stored the data is being analyzed and then you create a model to predict the future okay so these are the four or five uh, pillars of your data science industry or analytics industry so you need someone or you need few few people who store the data for you in a proper way so that it can be consumed okay so those are our data engineers okay then you have few uh, few people or few uh, i mean uh, few uh, good resources who analyze those data and understand what the data means okay and why the data is like that or what it is saying or the, what is the story behind this data those are the data analytics as well as the business intelligence developer okay they would visualize in a nice dashboard that okay uh, the sales figures are dipping uh, the revenue is growing profits are increasing or it's decreasing so they would you know present your data in a very nicer way so those are analysts and the bi developer and the third person would be the data scientist okay so he would have the domain knowledge he would have the uh, mathematical knowledge and he will decipher based on what has happened what might happen i mean by looking into the past he will try to figure out what what's there in future okay these are the broad career choices you have now in this you might have different designations you might have different uh, roles purely if you see if you ask me from my experience i could say this three are the uh, choices you have you might become analyst you might become data engineer you might become data scientist or uh, no some, someone could say what about ml engineer but uh, the ml engineer or data scientist are designations mostly uh, the work you will be doing is modeling so let let's see what are the skills you need for becoming a data scientist analyst or engineer or bi developer so uh, one thing uh, is very sure and i myself also keep on learning all these things it's statistical and mathematical knowledge a lot of people say you uh, you can skip it for now 
yeah uh, while learning uh, while learning i mean when you are new to the industry or new to the system you might say okay uh, okay we will not uh, focus much on the mathematics and statistics but eventually when you will get deeper into the industry you have to have statistical and mathematical knowledge with you uh, else you would be just using some models to build your uh, some some algorithms to build your models and then you might not be understanding how it's been working in the background of how can i tune this algorithm for my requirement so mathematics and statistics is a must now what uh, are the channels to program so could be python r uh, some interest is being shown in c c plus plus because those are fast uh, so uh, people are learning c c plus plus again but i would say python and r is more uh, relevant uh, as of now java is not being used very much earlier when there was no python or python support was not there then people used to develop something in uh, java uh, i myself has not used java uh, for develop, developing any ml and ai solution so um, mostly i use python and even not r python r is for statistical analysis uh, i have not come across any production environment where r being used uh, at least i am not aware uh, so uh, not sure you must be having a uh, bit of cloud knowledge like we are now moving from on premise development and deployment to the cloud development and deployment like uh, we are you, you, we are building our model in cloud itself and we are deploying it in cloud itself one reason being uh, the data where we are storing the data itself has moved to cloud earlier it used to be on prem uh, database but now it has moved to some uh, microsoft azure or aws or google cloud so and then you cannot download those data into on prem and then develop and then deploy you have to use the cloud environment okay so bit of uh, hadoop uh, knowledge uh, is also good uh, for data scientist they would be able to uh, you know uh, wrangle or uh, use their data skills the most important skill i see while becoming a data scientist is the sql i mean that's from the basis of any roles you take data engineer or bi or analyst that's what you should be knowing first i mean if you are good with sql at least you are able to query your data what is relevant data you require for building a model uh, and then you can uh, go forward and build the model important couple of more important points being data scientist i'm i'm telling it from a personal experience is the um, is the iterative nature the data science field is a very iterative in nature i mean if you talk about web development or any uh, standard software development you will not have those many iterations iteration in the sense once you have the design process uh design framework is ready uh, you know how to code that problem and then you code it and then deploy it test it out and deploy it but it's not like that in machine learning uh there is no certain proper framework uh as of now i mean it's very rough and uh, iterative uh like say we are working on a problem and then we find another problem so uh we suddenly go to that uh, that problem and try to understand what has happened and then based on that feedback we try to change our model so uh, to build a model it might take some time and uh, patience is required to understand the data and then uh, you would be able to better create a model so the iterative nature should not uh, uh, tire you that's that's one skill also you need the important skill is business skills uh, i might be Uh, good at programming i might be good at mathematics i i might be good at say uh, statistics but if i am not good at business understanding business i'm not saying i'm doing business uh, understanding the business uh, like for example i am into enterprise data management informatica is into data management company if i do not understand their products or how they do the business then i might not be able to even if i am good at mathematics or data modeling and all i would be not able to serve the company well because there would be definite mismatch between what uh, business wants and what we might deliver okay so understanding what uh, business need is and putting that business needs 
to understand statistics ml ai every technical stuff and then delivering the impact is always good i mean uh, that's the skills you require uh, so for data scientist you should have this kind of skill set um, for analyst modeling is not i mean uh, modeling in the sense like uh, you'll not be building you know a regression model or this complex mathematical model you would be building simpler forecasting models uh, sometimes related to your i mean based on your organization and use case how what, what use case you are solving so you must be focusing on uh, the data you have and then you try to mine it i mean uh, suppose you have the transaction history so uh, you might come up with analysis uh, like for example on this particular day a lot of transactions happened uh, on that particular day very few transactions happened uh, this was the volume of transaction like for example uh, if 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 i am i am a data analyst and i am sitting with uh, flipkart today then i would say that okay big billion day created a lot of uh, transaction and this was the average order value uh, but in normal days this was our average value so this kind of analysis is presented to the business uh, in a very nice dashboard so uh, that's the bi developer or the uh, analyst does there is another kind of a, a role uh, that is being worked out in um, in our industries uh, uh, similar to devops engineer okay i mean if you are if you are familiar with the devops where you continuously deploy the uh, deploy the builds into production so iteratively you build you're very agile you build uh, the uh, software and then you deploy it very quickly okay so here also because data science is a very iterative process you want to you know quickly make and then deploy quickly make and deploy so there is something called ml ops so um, that skill set i mean the use of github or the traditional uh, technology framework for deploying solution like github or uh, version control or say how you are managing i mean different version of data sets how you are managing uh, so the traditional uh, knowledge uh, for uh, software development is also required and people are excelling i mean people who are very familiar with devops and all, they are also uh, trying to learn ml ops and then, then they are upskilling and then trying to move to the uh, ml and ai space the last part is data engineer sometimes in the end, i mean uh, if you go back to four years back or four five years back you will not find uh, uh, you know much of data scientist you will find a lot of people working in the databases dba or da database administrator or uh, database engineer or they are working tireless tirelessly on the sql at least for my uh, for my company i can say because we move data in and out of uh, the system so people are keep on working on those uh, databases and then they move uh, one one table out of the system to that system so uh, those are our data engineers i mean from where data will come how to source it what are the data generating points how to bring those into one one table uh how to store them i mean you want a relational database or you want a non relational database you want a postgre you want a cloud you want a uh, sql so those decisions has to be made by the data engineers and these are i mean data engineers are very much required for data scientist or data analyst to succeed one of the primary i was reading about it and one of the primary reason why data scientists are frustrated uh, in the organization was they are not able to get the data i mean they want to do the modeling but data is not there and it is not possible that any organization will not have data that means data is not organized so these are some of the challenges and the data engineer uh, the role data engineering help us the uh, i mean help the organization to achieve uh, that goal where data is being stored properly it is being used it i mean it is being uh, you know uh, stored in one place and from there everybody is using and extracting some value out of it so these are some of the career choices you have in terms of uh, in the in the industry in the data science now most important part who are the folks who are who will employ this uh, data scientist analyst or data engineers 
and you know uh, use them to add value uh, there are four or five type of companies available in the industry generally we in the i mean uh, you know casual way we talk about product based service and service based uh, industry so uh, we always want to get into product uh, based or consulting uh, service based is the lowest i mean uh, we move out of service because you have a lot of client pressure and all uh, but mostly uh, the kind of work i mean uh, the big impact work are done by them in, them them only i mean uh, if you see you will not find uh, lots of new analytics product for example i mean uh, the time has changed you have couple of uh, couple of organization or startups who are working on the product based thing but they are not uh, uh, they are not building uh, product out of analytics but they are supporting the analytics environment for example suppose our favorite jupiter notebook okay so that is being built by anaconda uh, for supporting the uh, analytics industry okay uh, not it's not a analytics product per se okay uh, then you have uh, uh, something called hugging face okay hugging face itself is not a analytics company uh, product based company it's a it's a, it's a, it's a it's a company who build products for for consumption into analytics okay uh, so you have uh, it providers and it es providers okay so those are our traditional companies it services company uh, and their strength is um, they know the customer better i mean they are serving the customer uh, from a very long time so they have access to the top tier customer they have uh, the infrastructure and the knowledge also but what they lack is they are not able to attract a very good uh, uh, you know uh, very good uh, resources to implement their plans okay i mean the analytics professionals uh, they, they they have the lack of uh, i mean reasons could be various but uh, they do not have the uh, resources proper resources to execute their plans whereas this boutique analytics farms or the farms which are very specialized in uh, analytics i mean they offer only analytics services it and it es um, talks i mean uh, these are the end to end solution offering companies like any problem you have you can go to them and they will solve you they they will solve it for you but the boutique analytics farms are uh, the companies which will will help you in achieving only analytics solutions so this is a very i mean uh, the uh, the challenge for them is i mean the customer comes up with the whole problem like he 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 or she doesn't wants only analytics problems to be solved he wants you know uh, the whole end to end problems to be solved but they have uh, their own pluses like for example uh, they have a very deeper you know understanding or they have the kind of resource or people who have a very deeper understanding of analytics for example fractal or say uh, latent view tiger analytics those are the companies which will understand your business from analytics perspective and how can you you know uh, use it or mu sigma mu sigma is one of the leader in the industry uh, mu sigma uh i mean analytics industry it's a very big company and a very good company and then uh, you have couple of uh, r and d centers uh, they call it captive or gccs or i, I call it r and d centers uh, who are tied to their mother uh, branches for example or mother mother organization for example say uh, walmart or morgan stanley or jp morgan they have their r and d centers in india uh and they are doing a lot of uh, stuff uh they are they have a very good understanding of their products and what the market wants i mean for example uh they are focused mostly on the internal requirement i mean they don't release their products to outside consumers i mean whatever analytics development or research they do it they consume it internally so this is one plus and minus as well like uh, plus is like uh, you see the requirement uh, from that perspective and you know implement it so you have a better control on what you are doing but the negative part is uh, you would be very much 
uh, aligned with your uh, uh, mother organization or your parent organization. Uh, so that's that's one of the uh, minuses. And finally, the consulting companies. Uh, consulting companies are very good at providing uh, solutions, but execution is not their strength. I mean, uh, they cannot ex because they understand your business, but they don't have a, a skill in the game. I mean, for example, if you go to McKinsey and you are a telecommunication company, they will understand your business. I mean, they understand that okay, it's a telecom uh, telecommunication business. There are a lot of customers. There are a lot of stiff competitions and all. Everything is fine. But while coming to the execution plans, uh, they are not that forthright with uh, the executions. The in-house execution works better than the consulting execution. But they have the expertise and talent uh, with them. And they have very deep pockets to hire uh, very good resources for them. But they're still struggling with uh, the implementation part. Um, top tier consulting firms like McKinsey uh, are doing a bit well. Uh, they, they have very, I mean, they are trying to, I think, uh, figure out. Uh, and recently they had developed their own uh, applications and uh, ML, ML Studio type of thing. Uh, they have open sourced it, but yeah, still they have a lot of uh, lot of lot of things to take care of before they get into final execution and all. And then you have the domestic consumer farms. Okay, so those are not primarily software companies. Those are not primarily consulting companies. They are proper business houses, and they are trying to develop their uh, internal uh, capabilities to implement analytics. One reason why they want to have internal talents or internal uh, people who takes care of uh, takes care of analytics is they don't want to expose their data to some consulting company or uh, some uh, service company which doing business in India or outside. They want to keep the data by themselves. Uh, and then the second thing is they are very late to the party. I mean. Uh, the industry is, I mean, they are still figuring, uh, figuring, uh, uh, figuring out whether they should have inside or they should have outside. Uh, they are very late in implementing analytic solution, barring few, uh, I think, organization, maybe ICAC, I would take it off the bucket. They are very good at uh, adapting to the technologies. Maybe Reliance Geo uh, is very good at. Uh, uh, even SPI is trying to uh, get in-house capability with help of a uh, few uh, few service company uh, like IBM and all. Uh, earlier, they used to have a lot of uh, apps uh, for different different purpose. Like for example, if you have to have a loan, then you should apply it from different app. If you want to have, uh, uh, if you want to uh, browse the balance and do some transactions, you need to have a different app. But now they merged into one apps and they they are trying to uh, trying to bring some changes. So the plus is. They are pioneer in their uh, industry, SBI or ICSA, they are very good in their what they do traditionally. Uh, so they have the domain knowledge with them and people are there who can help the uh, analytics professional in-house. In but the problem is um, uh, they are very resistant to change. I mean, if I say that, okay, I'll have a model which will predict whether you are going to uh, going to give a loan to a person, then the manager would say, the branch manager or the uh, bank manager would say that, okay, uh, I cannot directly rely on you. Uh, somewhat true, but uh, yeah, slow to the adoption. That's the real challenge. Uh, these are a couple of, uh, you know, uh, employers of analytics professional you have. Now, what are the sectors uh, in analytics domain which are, uh, you know, high impact, and then you know those uh, those are really uh, matured, and they are really making an impact. So these are the this is the quadrant where the where the technology is impactful and it is matured, or it is getting matured. This is this is the area where it is getting matured, and these are the technology where it is matured. So one is data engineering. I was speaking with you, right? It it is there. It is there in the industry from long time, and they're well matured and they know what to do and how to do uh, like Hadoop's and those te technology has completely matured like Databricks is the new age. 
uh, AWS is in uh, AWS is being there for quite some time, and Azure is one of the good competitor. But Google Cloud is like, and they're they're just trying to pull. Uh, so data engineering is one pill which is really impactful and uh, you know uh, mature. And you have a uh, you have a, say this data integration in which Informatica is leader. I mean the ETL tool. Uh, if, if you might be knowing ETL. So uh, extract, transform, and then load. I mean, if you load one data uh, data table from one system to the other system, so we are in in that for a leader. And uh, the the industry is quite mature, and we have a lot of uh, products in there and a lot of talent available to execute our plans. Predictive analytics is also a very good mature uh, technology uh, and impactful one, where I mean people are trying to use. Predictive technology to do like I was giving some examples like uh, uh, Chun or you know uh, the spam filtering. Those things are working quite well. Uh, RPA, uh, I mean the technology uh, is new. I would not say that it, it's a very mature technology, but yeah, uh, it has improved uh, a lot. And then people are I mean trying to see from manual testing them. Uh, Going to the RPA and they are trying to figure out if that is working well. Some of the technology which is maturing and making an impact is our risk analytics. Okay, risk analytics is very specific to BFSI domain, uh, banking and financial services. So people are, uh, uh, I mean, using risk analytics to you know uh, uh, risk analytics to uh, uh, figure out. Uh, their strategies, so it, it it is quite improving. Speech recognition is one area where I would say it is. I mean, uh, it is one one area where it is very. Uh, we are expecting a very huge amount of uh, use cases coming out of it. If you know, observe that AI is one of the leading uh, leading uh, company doing a lot of uh, stuff in there. Uh, observe that AI is a, uh, is a is a company who um automate your uh, service centers or the customer service centers i mean they try to figure out in speech what you are telling and how you are telling all those speech recognition works are done by them and they are they are they're, they're doing very good work it's a startup based out of us uh, but it, it has an indian founder uh, so yeah so these are the mature and impactful technologies uh Few of the technologies which are matured but uh, yet to see any uh, impact is like uh, this object detection. So this is into uh, this is into uh, you know image based analysis where you are trying to uh, say for example it was it was it was it was in the news because after COVID a uh, uh, lot of people tried doing if you are wearing a mask or not. Because of its security reasons, I mean, um, you cannot have a face identification model running. I mean, whether somebody is running, uh, wearing a mask or not, because once you have this kind of technology, you can easily figure it out based out of a facial recognition that that person is who and that person is, uh, you know, who, what's his name and who is that person. So, due to, uh, due to this uh, security point of view or uh, uh, data privacy, this, this, Particular uh, uh, industry has not that evolved, um, or the ob object detection part is not working that well. It's not making that, but the technology is very much uh, mature. Now, a uh, couple of couple of technology. I mean, the emerging fields. Okay, let's talk about the emerging fields. So, uh, financial analytics is on the breach of uh, maturing as well as making an impact. So when I talk about uh, financial analysis, uh, I say it um, uh, like I am able to uh, analyze the uh, balance sheet of a company and then take some action based on that. That kind of analysis. Otherwise, you have a lot of information uh, for customers, and that will move to predictive analytics. It, it, it will not remain in the financial uh, analytics. So suppose I have. Okay, organization which is filing uh, filing lots of documents with uh, SEC or say uh, Bombay Stock Exchange or 
NFC, uh, National Stock Exchange, and then I want to process those records and try to understand what the company is doing. And so those kind of analysis, I think those 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 things are maturing, and I think it would be impactful when I think times come. I mean, we can wait for a certain uh, certain more 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 amount of time, and then we'll have this impact. Uh, one of the growth area uh, in this analytics industry is data annotation. I mean, people started working on the uh, data science modeling and then analytics and everything, but they suddenly found that uh, it is very tiresome to have uh, annotated data. I mean, you cannot, you cannot easily find out uh, uh, what, I mean, what to, I mean, how to annotate, how fast to annotate, and use it for your, uh, you know, uh, knowledge extraction. So, uh, for example, suppose I, I have lots of transaction and I, I want to annotate it with the fraud or normal. So, uh, in, the, in the people who have the domain knowledge can only, you know, uh, take those data. But you, people who are simply, I mean, people like me, like I don't have any experience in financial world. And if I move to move as a data scientist in the financial world, then I won't be able to tag any kind of data. So for that, there are data annotation tools uh, you can you can use for tagging your data. Um, uh, and then this this particular field is moving very fast. I mean, those are emerging field. MLOps is another emerging field, as I was talking in the few minutes back, where you are trying to you are developing the model. It's it's running fine in the local. You are you are thinking it will make an impact, but how to take that model to the production? Because in production, it's a different space. I mean, data will be coming, data distribution will be changing. Like you have trained a model using some data, but uh, the distribution of the data changed after, after let's say a month or two. Then what, what are you going to do it? So these kind of questions are answered by MLOps and they are, uh, that's a very high growth area and it's a very emerging field. So uh, these are a couple of, uh, uh, you, I mean, uh, few areas in the in the analytics industry which you can choose to work but i think in my opinion you uh, once you decide that okay you are working on nlp or predictive analytics based on your organization requirement you have to learn mlops you have to learn data annotations you have to learn uh, anything which is which will supplement your modeling so yeah now uh, now moving to <clears throat> the next, uh, where are the jobs and what are the sectors where you can easily find data science jobs? This is one interesting aspect. Uh, Analytics India magazine is one magazine. I think uh, they does this survey regularly and you would be able to find this uh, chart and uh, you know read about it in Analytics India magazine. You can download the latest report. Uh, and then you can read about it, what's happening in the industry. So traditionally, uh, banking, financial, and insurance service, these are the these are three, three uh, sectors, or we can call it BFSI, are always in forefront of adapting to new technology, be it anything, be it, be it cloud, be it uh, ML, be it AI, uh, analysis, data science, anything. So most of the jobs are there in this sector, like uh, uh, financial sectors, okay, like banks or insurance companies. After that, you will find uh, jobs in the uh, e-commerce or internet companies, because there you have the uh, lot of lot of use cases, like for example, recommendation engine. You have the click through. Uh, I mean. A, A by B testing, you have a, a predictive analytics, you have a lot of lot of like image detection, object detection, a lot, lot of stuff you have in the internet companies. Those are basically built on the data. So there you definitely have some analysis and uh, data science role. But after BFSI, these are the companies. You have, I mean, uh, you will have a good amount of uh, uh, openings in the, uh, in the in the in the retail sector as well. Like for example, Geo is hiring very strongly. You can you know uh, deliberate whether it's a uh, 
internet company or it's a retail uh, they're still figuring out but yeah uh, for me it's uh, like geo mart and all those are working in uh, retail sector and they are uh, they are making an impact and they're uh, they're just trying to uh, they have lots of opening uh, retail industry and one industry i think which is really uh, two uh, not one two are really picking up is telecommunication and uh, hospitality okay so uh, i think hospitality if you say the travel part i think the airlines ticket booking and all i think you can today do it using some chatbots you need not uh, even uh, you know uh, logging to the website you can do it in chatbot go uh, ivo make my trip those are trying to get into that and it's a huge potential uh, because suppose i want to uh, travel to one place to other i can say in a very natural text that okay i want i want to have a flight uh, tomorrow from uh, bangalore to bombay okay or mumbai so uh, the system would be easily able to understand okay this person is trying to travel from uh, bangalore to mumbai and then based on that he will show you recommendation the system will show you recommendations telecommunication is one area like uh, the geo uh, they are trying to bring on analytics to see uh, what i mean they are trying to bundle the products i mean say for example broadband uh, normal carrier services so they are also uh, using uh, airtel is also fairly using analytics to see uh, the customer behavior and they are trying to figure it out uh, one thing you must have seen like uh, zomato and all uh, they falls into actually internet companies but uh, because they are delivering foods and all they are rapidly using geo spectral data i mean uh, the addresses the particular maps and all to uh, deliver goods to you instantly i mean uh, getting the location is a very tough thing i mean uh, it's not that easy to locate you and then get the service deliver in urban areas it is doable but uh, if you go to the tier 3 tier 4 cities where maps are not properly marked or the uh, signs are not there uh, there it's very tough to deliver goods so they're working on those areas so you'll have openings in uh, this kind of companies as well now uh, the major shares are of of course of bfsi and then the internet companies so uh, i think uh, 50% of the shares the openings are there in bfsi and the e-commerce like flipkart we will uh, walmart or zomato or you know and then uh, one thing the report does not cover is the enterprise uh, companies like uh, like informatica microsoft or say uh, like for example the companies who like uh, like the tiger uh, tiger analytics or fractal or those are another area where uh, those are specialized they offer specialized uh, uh, specialized help in the analytics they also have a lot of opening in that uh, in terms of data science and all so um, yeah the requirement is growing for sure and these are couple of uh, sectors where you can definitely you know focus to work on or once you get training or once you are ready for uh, taking the plunge you can try to find out these are in these sectors now the most important part the salaries how the salaries are changing with respect to the requirement and the industry evolving so you can see that trend it's upward and onwards I, we hope for uh, that only uh, we don't want a downgrade trend in our salaries and all so if you see um, just a figure i mean uh, uh, salaries which are offered between 20 to 50 lakhs year on or year on year growth in absolute number uh, is around 18000 or say 19000 today uh, which was uh, 3585 in 2021 might be due to pandemic but still uh, there is a six time increase in the requirement of a uh, data scientist as i mean data science roles as well as this increase in the salary so uh, yeah a lot of companies are looking at uh, good resource and they are happy to pay for it uh, but the delivery has to be good and uh, it should be worth i mean uh, if you if a company is paying a good decent salary then it expects uh, decent uh, returns from the resource as well 
so uh, but major of the like uh, 20, 2023 quarter of the uh, requirements are still into this three to six lakhs uh, band but uh, slowly we are moving into 6 to 10 lakhs or 10 to 15 lakhs if you see 6 to 10 lakhs you have 20% around 20% jobs are into 6 to 10 lakhs or 15% uh, into 10 to 15 lakhs uh, if you if you are skilled more and then you have a lot of ex uh, good experience then you can move into 15 to 25 lakhs bracket where you are uh, you know offered a very good uh, decent salary and then uh, you'll be i mean your expertise will be used by the organization to make an impact so uh, with this, this is my last slide. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions you have. Uh, it will be very nice to answer all your questions. Thank you. Uh, Lalit. Uh, nobody has any questions for me. Okay. I can still wait for a few minutes. If you have any questions, you can please ping me. Uh, I hope I'm audible to everyone, right? Anyone from the attendees? I mean, can anyone answer? Um, I hope if we don't have any questions, we can close the session. I can stop sharing my screen. I think we can end the session as we don't have any queries. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining.